Hey guys, Tyler here, and thank you for checking out this video. And 9.2 is finally here, which means we have a 9.2 Marksman Hunter guide for you guys today. But I decided to go a little bit crazy this uh, last tier of Shadowlands, which means we have four, one for each covenant. So this Marksman Hunter guide is going to be for Kyrian Marksman Hunters. Uh, if you are uh, wanting to check out any of the other covenants, be sure and check them out over on my channel. Uh, they are just in a Marksman Hunter guide playlist. And in this particular video, I have all the information you need to know about conduits, soul binds, whether you want to run with Mechanicos or Pelagos, I've got you covered. We've got opener, rotation, legendary options, and talking about that two and four set and how it changes our play style. So, Let's get started. Mr. Eggplant present. And before we dive into the video, I just wanted to say thank you guys so much for supporting me here in Shadowlands. YouTube is such a rewarding hobby and it's so nice to connect with people all over the world. And if this did help you out, this video, you learned something new, definitely consider subscribing if you haven't already. That way we can t continue to grow the channel and that way we can uh, help more people enjoy Marksman Hunter, their favorite class, favorite spec of the game. And then also, I cannot update this video after it does go live, obviously, so if there's any changes Changes, be sure and check the pinned comment down below, check the description, and then also just check out the timestamps. It might be a little long for you. Find the place that you are looking for, and let's go ahead and get to the video. So first off, why Kyrian? As a Kyrian Marksman Hunter, you get two main abilities, one being Resonating Arrow and the second being Summon Steward. The way Resonating Arrow works is it's on a one minute cooldown, which can be lowered even further than that if you're running with Mechanicos as your Soulbind, but it gives you an additional 30% chance to crit enemies inside that circle, and it also gives you line of sight of them even if they're not in your line of sight. And if they do leave the circle, you do get four additional seconds to have line of sight of them even if they are around a pillar. And then in 9.2, the legendary belt that you get will give your whole group an additional 10% chance to crit as a buff whenever you use your resonating arrow, even if enemies are not in a circle. And your second ability is going to be Summon Steward, which gives you three files of Serenity. They basically act as a health potion. They can also get rid of diseases, poisons, curses, and I believe bleeds as well. And they don't count towards actually using a health potion, which is really nice. And all of their abilities are on a timer, but you can lower that with Soulbind traits like Bond of Friendship, for example. And then also in the Mythic Plus Dungeons of Necrotic Wake, and then also in Spires of Ascension, the Steward does give you some special abilities. One of those being talking to the golems throughout a Necrotic Wake, giving you a special ability when you chat with them nearby to give you Anima Exhaust, which is a damage and damage reduction buff, which is really nice. And then in Spires of Ascension, it gives you a Spear of Destiny, which basically will stun an enemy and increase the damage they've taken pretty significantly for a short Short period of time. First, let's go ahead and pick a soul bind for your Kyrian Marksman Hunter. And there are two different trees that really excel in different areas of the game. Uh, one of those being Forge Light Prime Mechanicos, and the second being Pelagos. So for single target Mechanicos, the first ability you're going to pick is Bronze Call to Action. By far my favorite uh, soul bind ability in the entire game. I love it so much. Uh, but the first potency conduit you'll pick will be Enfeebled Mark followed up by Forge Light Filter, and then this is where you get your first Finesse Conduit. If you have the ability to interrupt at all during a fight or in Mythic Plus or anything that you're doing, Reversal of Fortune is amazing and is a must. Uh, otherwise, you can pick any of the Finesse Conduits you like here. And this is where we come to the first fork in the road, either Regenerating Materials or Resilient Wings. I prefer uh, Regenerating Materials because I literally never had to repair if you're doing Mythic Plus or raiding it really procs that much when you get healed and i never had to spend a dime on any repairs from here you'll pick an endurance conduit there are five different ones for marksman hunters and this is where you can pick the ones you want either condensed animosphere marksman's advantage harmony of the tortolan rejuvenating winds or resilience of the hunter i prefer resilience harmony and condensed but that's really uh, my choice you can go ahead and pick whichever you'd like from here, you'll pick Sharpshooter's Focus as a potency conduit, and then pick Soul Steel Clamps. 
From here, if you're doing single target, you'll pick powerful precision to increase the damage of your precise shots. Then come down here to Soul Glow Spectrometer, which gives you percentage damage increase every second or every three seconds, I should say, for 15, and then it goes back to zero and then starts again. It only does help you with damage. And then you'll have your last endurance conduit, followed by the effusive anima accelerator. And as for Mythic Plus or an AoE build for Mechanicos, it doesn't change too much at all. You still have that option of either regenerating materials or resilient plumage, but the main difference is going to be down there in the middle of the tree, uh, where you, instead of picking the uh, Sharpshooter's Focus Conduit, you would go over here and pick another Endurance Conduit, which will give you a little bit more uh, defensive abilities, which is nice, but then you'll pick Hammer of Genesis which basically whenever you damage a new enemy, you get 3% haste and it stacks up to five times in last 10 seconds. So in an AOE situation, in a Mythic Plus, for example, you are going to be attacking new new targets all the time. So you're going to have three to 15% haste almost constantly. And that is really, really strong. Other than that, like I said, with the Endurance Conduits, you pick whichever ones you like. I prefer the ones that have asterisk next to them, but you can go ahead and pick ones for yourself. And the other soulbind tree to choose from is Pelagos. And for single target for Pelagos, the first ability you want to pick is Combat Meditation, followed by Enfeebled Mark, Focusing Mantra, and then this is where you pick any Endurance Conduit of the five that you like. And then you get the first fork in the road, which either going to be Bond of Friendship or Cleansed Vestments. Cleansed Vestments is the best for money-making purposes. Do that whenever you are uh, out doing world quests, for example. Make some money with those enchanting and tailoring mats. And then you could also pick from uh, Bond of Friendship, which just uh, lowers the cooldown of your steward's non-file services by 30 seconds every time you kill an enemy. Believe it or not, that's very, very fast. And then from here, you'll pick a potency conduit of Sharpshooter's Focus. And then the other fork in the road is either an Endurance Conduit or picking Reversal of Fortune as a Finesse Conduit. From there, we will let go of the past, which it lowers the amount of damage you take uh, by up to 3%. Then Powerful Precision, Better Together, which will give you and someone else nearby a mastery buff by 40 for one minute. Then another Endurance Conduit, and finally your uh, Capstone ability is going to be Newfound Resolve. So once in a while, a doubt will manifest and you just have to turn and look at it, and then you get 10% of your primary stat, which is Agility for us, and Stamina for 15 seconds. And then finally, an AoE or a Mythic Plus build for Pelagos would look something like this, which he does excel at, by the way. Uh, the one major change is down near the bottom of the tree. You want to drop Powerful Precision and pick up Deadly Chain, which is a must for AoE. Uh, basically, what Deadly Chain does is the trick shot damage of your bouncing aim shot or rapid fire inc gets increased by a percentage, which is going to be very strong because we're going to be getting trick shots a lot more thanks to our 2 and 4 set come 9.2. So this might even be a must uh, for 2 target cleave in raid settings. Then up next is going to be our single target and AoE talents, and unfortunately these have not really changed at all this expansion. So for single target, first you want to pick Master Marksman, and then at level 25 pick Careful Aim. From here you can either pick Trailblazer or Natural Mending. For anything that's competitive, I would always pick Natural Mending, but if you want to just make have a quality of life a talent, Trailblazer is the way to go. It just gives you faster movement speed when you're not attacking. I do this all the time for the Maw, anytime I'm doing World Quests, that sort of thing. At level 35, I pick Steady Focus over everything else. Level 40, you can either pick Post Haste or Born to be Wild. I prefer Born to be Wild now just because I use Turtle and Cheetah often, and then if you're using the Conduits to further lower their cooldown, this is very, very strong. But if you need to get out of Roots or Movement Impairing Effects, Post Haste is the way to go. Uh, one thing I would think of would be uh, in the beginning of the maze in Mists of Tyrannus Scythe, or the... Uh, the shackles that Sogadon had put on you in the Season 2 affix of Tormented, it would get out of the, the roots he would put on you. Uh, other than that, level 45, double tap is the way to go. Unfortunately, since Master Marksman was changed from BFA to Shadowlands, lethal shots will rarely see play. And then at level 50, you'll pick Lock and Load. It just is the better of all three. Unfortunately, calling the shots does fall short since we don't get those free arcane or multi shots like we did in BFA. And then as for your AoE talent, for a Mythic Plus build, for example. For level 15, you want to pick Master Marksman. 
and then at level 25 you'll pick explosive shot from there like i said if it's anything that's going to be competitive at all you want to pick natural mending over trailblazer level 35 you want to pick streamline level 40 is of course your choice as well either born to be wild or post haste much like the single target reasoning i tend to play with born to be wild uh, over the alternative and at level 45 you'll pick double tap and then level 50 you'll pick volley the one thing that i would change is you get higher into mythic plus i would say like 20s or above particularly on tyrannical weeks if your group excels at aoe already a lot of players have been moving to careful aim just for tyrannical weeks or just on extremely high keys you know 20 25s and, and even higher other than that i would still play with explosive shot if you're not pushing those 25 keys now that we have our build set up let's go ahead and talk about stat priorities for your kyrian marksman hunter and thanks to Resonating Arrow and then the Legendary Belt that you'll be building here in 9.2, crit isn't nearly as important for Kyrian as it is for the other three covenants. So for, because of that, I wouldn't go more than 25-30% to 30 base crit. Because after 30% you hit Diminishing Returns anyway, and that could be put elsewhere like Mastery or Versatility. So for those reasons, the stat priority would look something like this for a Kyrian Marksman Hunter. Uh, weapon DPS is your best stat in the game followed by agility, which is your main stat, and then crit. And that's where I would do 25 to 30%. From there, I would do mastery, then versatility, and then haste. Haste is technically our worst stat, but it is the quality of life stat, as I would like to say. So the lower your haste, the better. That way, uh, you would be putting more of that into mastery or versatility, which just increases your damage output. But lower haste is harder to play. So this is based on your play style. So you could have more if you're struggling to get those aim shots in, or you have to constantly move a lot, or less haste is better if you are just trying to do nothing but damage and you can get away with uh, standing still for large periods of time. And then after that, any crit that's above 30% is the last stat you would need, uh, I would be putting that into versatility or mastery or even haste at that point. But then also, if you are doing high Mythic Plus keys, or if you are uh, struggling to survive in Mythic, for example, in Mythic Raiding, or even in PvP, versatility does become much more important than Mastery, and then you would stack that over stacking Mastery, uh, just because it does lower the amount of damage that you take. And now, let's go ahead and talk about doing damage here on your Marksman Hunter. So first off, for your opener for single target, you want to use double tap with about 10 seconds left on your pull timer. From there, you're going to want to cast your steady shot as the pre-pull attack, and you want to do that about 2 seconds before your uh, timer ends. That does fluctuate based on your amount of haste and then how far away from the boss that you are. Then you'll follow that up with a steady shot, then you'll use your resonating arrow, and then true shot, you're in your racials, and any unused trinket you have. From there, you'll use aim shot, then rapid fire, then aim shot, then arcane shot, then rapid fire should be up, and then you'll use aim shot, aim shot, and then from there, you'll go into your normal rotation. So now let's go ahead and check out what a live opener would look like using that rotation. And in this video, my item level is 243, so I don't have any of the new 9.2 gear yet. And then as for an AoE opener, we have Double Tap, then Explosive Shot, followed by a macro with True Shot racials and trinkets in it, followed by your Resonating Arrow, then Volley, Aim Shot, Rapid Fire, Aim Shot, Aim Shot, Multi Shot, Aimed, and then after that you'll do your normal rotation priority. So now on to your rotation, which is less of a rotation and more of an ability priority anymore. And this is what it would look like for single target. So for one, make sure you're using kill shot on cooldown if it's available to you. Uh, number two, make sure you're keeping that 7% steady focus haste buff up at all times. 
To do that, you have to cast Steady Shot twice in a row. That should be the talent that you're running if you are doing a single target fight. And then I always try to shoot for at least 90% uptime on that. That is something that you can track on Warcraft logs if that's something you want to get better at. But just having that extra haste is so important, particularly if you're running low haste like I do in my build. Then, number three, you want to use Double Tap on cooldown. Uh, since you are running careful aim, you want to make sure and uh, use double tap on aim shot when the target's health is above 70%, and then use it on rapid fire when they're below 70%. From there, we're going to use True Shot at number four, and then at number five, we're going to cast Resonating Arrow on cooldown. But to do that, make sure you have your Rapid Fire ready to go, or at least one charge of Aim Shot to really make it worthwhile. At number six, use your Aim Shots as much as possible, but avoid capping on charges, because it does take a little bit to recharge them. We only have two charges. Make sure that you're kind of weaving them in between other attacks. From there, we're going to use Rapid Fire, then Arcane Shot, when you have those precise sh shot procs up, you get those by casting an aim shot. And then you want to make sure and use Arcane Shot as well to dump focus should you need to. And then finally, uh, number nine is going to be Steady Shots if you need focus. And I tend to just do them in twos to always get my Steady Focus haste buff back, even when I don't necessarily need it. So things that you want to avoid is making sure, like I said earlier, that you're not capping out on your two charges of aim shot. You don't want to waste those precise shot procs outside of your true shot windows. And then finally, uh, make sure that you're not capping on focus. But the, the big part uh, with our burst as a Kyrian Marksman Hunter, make sure that you're using everything together. So make sure if double tap and true shot and your resonating arrow are almost off of cooldown at the same time, delay them a little bit to make sure you can uh, go ahead and use all three of those at the same time. That's massive damage and a real big perk of playing a Kyrian Marksman Hunter. And then as for an AOE rotation, if you will, it would look something like this. So number one, make sure you're using explosive shot on cooldown. Number two, make sure you're using double tap. Uh, since we are in an AOE situation, you probably won't be running with careful aim. So you want to double tap rapid fire instead of aim shot. From there, then we'll use resonating arrow. Number four, true shot. Number five, volley. Number six, multi shot if you need your trick shots buff. So you want to make sure that you're hitting three targets with multi shot. That way you can spray to get your trick shots. Uh, otherwise, you want to use rapid fire, then aim shot, then make sure multi shot, if nothing else, to dump focus, for example, much like you would uh, with your arcane shots, then kill shot, unless there is, I believe it's less than three targets, and then finally steady shot when you absolutely need focus. And then just like single target, make sure that you, you have all of these abilities up. If you have to delay them a little bit to have, you know, resonating arrow, true shot, multi shot, and explosive shot up at the same time, that's a massive amount of AoE damage and it was a big perk uh, to playing a Kyrian Marksman Hunter. And now comes the fun part of the video, which is going to be the main reason that you guys are checking out this video, which is going to be all the changes for 9.2 Marksman Hunter, the legendaries you want to run with week one versus after you have your four set, the legendary belt, and that two and four set, and how that changes the legendaries that you'll be picking. Uh, so I am really, really excited for this. So 9.2 Marksman Hunter changes. <gasps> okay. We didn't have any. We had a couple of uh, Anima Powers and Torghast and that was it. So check that box now. So luckily we did not see any nerfs or anything like that. So week one, the legendary you want to run with for single target is going to still be your Serpent Stalker's Band of Trickery. It does approximately 8% of your total damage and does not change your playstyle at all. And then for AoE and then for Mythic Plus, you'll be running with Surging Shots. It's still the best, increases the damage of uh, your Rapid Fireworks, which works well with both Double Tap and Streamline. And for that, that will be the best pick. But after you get your four set, both of those might just go out the window. Uh, so we'll talk about that once we talk about the two and four set. But first, the legendary belt does give us a new legendary effect uh, in 9.2. So it takes approximately five weeks to unlock, and I will put an article down in the description of the video. It will be clearly marked on how to unlock that as soon as possible. And like I said, it takes approximately five weeks. But once you get it, that is your second legendary and gives you a legendary effect of your covenant. So for us, it is Pact of the Soul Stalkers. 
more of a support legendary, I guess you could say, in comparison to some of the others. But I mean, it does give you almost 70% crit in total if you count everything. So I, I think it's going to do just fine for you. But whenever you do damage with your resonating arrow, the entire party gains an additional 10% chance to crit for 10 seconds. Not bad if I do say so myself. So now let's talk about that two and four set. I have a video up on my channel, but if you guys didn't check that out, let's talk about it really quick. So the two set reads as follows. So trick shots now increases the damage of the affected shot by 30%. If you only have the two set, it's only good for AOE. And it is you know, fairly good. Uh, basically, whenever you spray or whenever you get trick shots with whenever you're using volley or you're using your multi shot, you can now do 30% increased damage with that bouncing attack. Cool. So it gets better once you get your four set. So your four set says spending 40 focus grants you one charge of trick shots. What does that tell you? Uh, that tells you that whenever you're casting an aim shot, which if you check out down here, costs 35 focus, it will give you trick shots, which will then in turn increase the next damage of your rapid fire or your aim shot by 30%. It doesn't say it has to bounce. It only says that main attack will, you know, do 30% more and so will all the bounces because of it. So because of that, once you get your four set, you are really in business. And this opens up the new legendary that I was talking about, which is Unblinking Vigil. So the way this reads is as follows. So when you gain the trick shots effect, thanks to your legendary, or set I should say, or two set if you're in an AOE situation, you have a 50% chance to refund a charge of aim shot and then cause your next aim shot to not consume any focus. You can literally start spamming your aim shots and they don't hurt you in any way and they don't waste any focus. This is good in AOE. This is amazing in single target since aim shot will still be your number one damage dealing ability. So this, it has great synergy. It allows me as a player to build a lazy build, which I love, making, making it so I have to change very little to go from single target and AOE. And this is just a great change for Marksman Hunter. Uh, Marksman does tend to falter in single target fights. This will only help us. And we excel at AOE, and it only helps us additionally. So I am really excited for these changes, uh, and I cannot wait to get the uh, four set and the new legendary belt uh, on my hunter as soon as possible to do some amazing damage in both raid and mythic plus and these last couple of sections are pretty easy uh, this one is going to be about your macros and weak auras that i use so these i, I use very few uh, macros if i'm being honest but they are found on the screen right now the one that i would change is obviously the misdirection macro i will just put where it says tank name here make sure you put you the name of your tank in your particular raid that way you can just help them out with a pull and then if you want to know all of the weak auras i use if you send me a message personally on my discord channel you just friend me on there or join my discord a link in the description below i can personally send you the weak aura uh, strings that i use they are rather long i haven't figured out how to compress them yet but i can send you those personally if you ask for those and the last section of this video is going to be about consumables and enchants that I use on my Marksman Hunter. Uh, so uh, for the ring enchants, those can kind of change based on what you're trying to get to, like percentage wise. If you need a little bit more crit, I would put crit on the ring. Same way goes for gems. Uh, if you want to add more versatility or if you're doing PVP, put versatility on your rings and gems. And then also if you want to drop some crit and you want to put mastery in there, you can do that as well. So those will fluctuate for me. And then for your chest piece, plus 30 to stats is still the best. And for your boots, 15 agility is always good. And then finally on your weapon, I use the celestial uh, enchant, gives you 5% of your main stat, which is agility, which is always good. You could always use one of the uh, scopes from Shadowlands as well. And then finally, as for the consumables themselves, I still use agility potions. Uh, they're still uh, my, my favorite and they're pretty easy for me to make as a Venthyr most of the time on some of my other classes. I spend a large amount of time in Revendreth. And then uh, the Shadow Core oil is still the best oil to use. Food, I fluctuate between having the food buff from Raid or Mastery food or Versatility food if you need a little bit more uh, survivability. 
So if you guys made it to the end of this video, thank you so, so much. This has been a huge undertaking for me doing four Marksman Hunter guides in nine days. Uh, I did not think it would uh, have that short of a turnaround, but unfortunately uh, it did. Uh, I would hope you guys would consider subscribing to me here on YouTube and follow me over at Twitch at twitch.tv slash Mr. Eggplant. I have streams going all week long. I will be streaming my guild's raid now that 9.2 is finally upon us. And if you guys didn't like this guide, be sure and check out any of the other Covenant guides. They will be found in a, a playlist here on YouTube, whether that be Kyrian, looking for Necrolord, Benthir, or even Night Fae. I've got you covered. They are all there. So thank you guys so much. Uh, be sure and leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think. Things that I can maybe change. I can always do that. And if not, I appreciate you spending your, your time with me, and I look forward to hearing all of you guys' great comments uh, for Mythic Plus. Best of luck in Raid, Mythic Plus if you're going for Keystone Master or above, and I cannot wait to talk to you guys live in a stream very soon. So thank you guys for watching.